A very warm welcome to the 49th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. I hope everybody is enjoying their weekend so far. There is a world of stories out there to cover. I will certainly not be getting through everything. There is just simply far too much going on at the moment. But I will, as always, endeavour to try and cover as much as I possibly can. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'm obviously trying to um, continue to provide a source of weather information that is a little bit different to your average Joe, trying to cover the bigger, broader picture, looking at the climate drivers that is uh, essentially controlling the uh, global uh, circulation as well as local and uh, you know we we are pretty locked in this kind of trophy july at the moment here of course gone is the high pressure may and june and we are seeing a reflection in that um within the surrounding sea service temperature anomalies uh, over the last seven days we've seen a fairly significant cool down we've shaved a full half a degree of the north atlantic sea surface temperature anomaly in the last week or so maybe even slightly more than that actually and that is a, dir a direct consequence to the shift in the upper pattern so this was fully expected it was mentioned before it happened here on the channel that uh, we would see a decrease in that heat um, amount of available energy stored up in the oceans that had accumulated over the last couple of months thanks to high pressure lack of wind and and whatnot i've explained that of course already so there's no point in me going on about that. But you can see here quite a lot of cooling actually around the global ocean surface at the moment here, the Indian Ocean, the North Pacific. Uh, we've not seen much increase in the El Nino, which is quite interesting. Some of those longer range models are actually starting to back away from that super El Nino idea that they had a month or so ago. That's quite interesting. We're getting a little bit stronger westerly winds as expected, you know, compared to average and that is kind of slowing down the progress of this El Nino. Um, but notice notable cooling actually across the uh, you know the North Atlantic and surrounding UK. These are the current sea surface temperature anomalies based on the CDAS data. This is off tropical tidbits. I will actually try and do a video, brief video with that, looking at the uh, websites that I use here on, on markovanweather.com as well to show you because I, I've had a few times people asking me what the websites I use and uh, that's actually quite a valid question so I'll, I'll maybe do a, a special video just looking at the websites that I use here on the channel so that um, you know perhaps you can check it out for yourself but uh, yeah like I say warm um, we've got this kind of cooling taking place in the south coast of Alaska there's the El Nino of course but it's not you know um, strong at the moment here we're not seeing this strong progress and that is kind of typical you would normally see that towards the autumn Christmas time period. That's usually when El Nino really peaks in intensity. So there's a, a slow progress into the El Nino this year. Uh, we've got this uh, fairly strong cooling in the northwest portion of the Indian Ocean. We've got a fair amount of cooling actually down the west coast of Africa as well as in the east. We've got some strong cooling even on the west side of uh, Australia, but we've got quite warm waters north and southeast. And we've got, of course, quite cold conditions and unusually wet conditions based on the fact that you would typically start to see the, the you know, Australia starting to kind of dry out. Um, but we are seeing some fairly conflicting uh, atmospheric conditions based on the El Nino that we're seeing at the moment here. Uh, these were the temperatures yesterday, of course, very, very warm, but not as warm as expected, especially across the southeast where I think Tippenham Airfield recorded 28.9 Celsius. That was the UK maximum yesterday. We had fairly close to that actually up in Kinloss and Lossiemouth, just a fraction below that, 20, 28.5 at both sites. Here at the house, 26, 27.6. That was actually a fraction of a degree above the, the maximum here. Uh, that I recorded, and I have to eat my words. I said to my wife a couple, like a week or so ago, that the twenty-seven point five recorded here at the house will not be, uh, will will be the maximum we we'll see, um, you know, for the whole summer, and we did actually break that day yesterday, which was quite interesting. We also had the second hottest day on record in Stornoway on the Isle of Lewis, uh, an impressive, I believe it was twenty-six Celsius recorded in the town of Stornoway yesterday. So a notably hot day yesterday. 
all thanks to strong south to southeasterly winds forced the, uh, of course, um, you know, areas to the lee of the mountains to see some of the hottest temperatures anywhere in the UK yesterday. So a very warm day in the north of Scotland and even in the northwest where uh, Old Bay, uh, a typically cooler spot, was at 27.6. So, uh, you know, all thanks to that wind direction, of course. And like I say, we had uh, slightly less hot conditions compared to what some of the models suggested of course. So uh, let's have our weekly look at the uh, the global temperature anomaly. And this is for the month of July so far. So a fairly cool Australia, as you can see here, northern India doing very well indeed. Plenty of rain. The monsoon is certainly doing its work this year. And again, that is a counter, uh, you know, against uh, what you would typically expect with the developing El Nino. Uh, we've got a cold uh, Mongolia, Western China still below average. That's been the case throughout this year, actually, where Western portions of China has been below average, despite the fact that a lot of focus being on the heat waves that have been taking place in the eastern portions of the country. Uh, Equatorial Africa is below average versus a warm North and South Africa. Central portion of the United States and Canada below average, but we have seen some remarkably hot conditions up into the Arctic region of Canada. Uh, we'll look at that in just a second. Eastern Canada, Eastern United States, warmer than average. The UK, uh, let's have a look at Europe actually. And you can see here that we have got a below average uh, first day, uh, eight, nine days of the month across particularly the central portion, so Midlands and the uh, kind of southern portions of England, Wales, average conditions elsewhere. And of course, you've got that re reflection of warmer than average sea surface temperatures um, offshore. Cool and average across Scandinavia, the majority of Europe is a uh, slightly warmer than average. Italy below average, the Balkan region below average. Eastern portions of Europe will have had some very hot conditions. It has been, uh, of course, um, uh, pretty warm. This was the month of June, of course, for Europe. Warmest on record, arguably, for the UK. And, uh, of course, you can draw your own comparisons and, and speculation and, and whatever. The Met Office has declared it, uh, that nearly a full one Celsius warmer than the previous record set back. Uh, I believe in what 1940 or whatever, or 1976. I get mixed up sometimes with some of these figures, the way they get thrown out. But it was, of course, a very warm month in the West versus a cool and average east of the continent here. And looking at the global situation for the month of June, this was, of course, how they panned out. If we get to the right chart, and you can see here, yep, so a warm Europe to the West, a cold to the East. There's that northwest corner of India, below average. Most of Africa, you could argue, was, um, you know, the majority of Africa was uh, slightly below average. Western Australia was uh, below average versus a warm. There's China, of course. Uh, only southwestern portions of China was below average during the month of uh, June. Very warm compared to average eastern Siberia. Cold compared to average across Alaska. The western United States, one of the coldest Junes on record. But, of course, again... Once the temperatures go to 125 at Death Valley, which you would expect to see, of course, this time of the year, you forget about the fact that June was a very cool month across western and eastern portions of the United States here. Trying to, of course, show you the big picture. The UAH temperature has uh, been released uh, at uh, plus 0 0.38 Celsius above the average, of course. We have had that second dip thanks to the triple La Nina, of course. And we are seeing a gradual, slow recovery from that kind of uh, drop off in the uh, global UAH temperature seen back, uh, you know, earlier this year. We are seeing a slow. We will expect to see the global average start to rise back towards these two most recent peaks. Um, but uh, yeah, the world is a slightly, believe it or not, a slightly cooler place than it was back in twenty sixteen. That being said, uh, we will look at some of the statistics coming out of um, of uh, um, you know some of the global uh, like the World Meteorology uh, Department declared that you know a few days ago the global average temperature reached a new peak, but uh, we'll get to that in just a second. So a big big difference temperature wise across the UK today and Ireland of course as well compared to what we've seen 24 hours ago, uh, much fresher conditions, still humid, 
but the temperatures are much much more suppressed compared to what they were yesterday of course so let's have a look and scroll through twitter and see what has been going on around the world in the last uh the last week or so so copernicus uh, ECMWF, this was a tweet put out according to preliminary data uh, from the e -A -E -R -A 5 data site, the global average 2 metre temperature anomaly now don't shoot the messenger folks, I'm only passing on what I'm seeing okay, I understand you know my thinking towards this as well um, but you know, the global temperature reached 16.88 celsius on monday so this was of course last monday breaking the previous world record of 16.80 from august 2016 and of course that was coming off the back of the super el nino that we have of course seen so the global average temperature across the face of the planet reached a new uh, benchmark back monday of last week here so that's quite interesting of course some flash flooding scenes across Sheffield yesterday afternoon, as you can see here. Also, some very wild stuff indeed in Chester, um, thanks to that cold front sliding eastwards, bumping into the hot, humid, juicy air mass, of course, triggered some very wild conditions, as you can see here, thanks to James Dixon for that tweet that I then happened to retweet yesterday. And uh, Antarctica actually reached a new uh, July record yesterday with a temperature of minus 33.7 Celsius. And that was, uh, or, sorry, the temperature rose to minus 31.9, broke the monthly maximum set back in 67 and 1986. So, of course, Antarctica being very warm, a very strong negative a, a antarctic oscillation at the moment of course driving some cold wet conditions in australia parts of south america parts of uh, south africa as well but it's this warm antarctica that is essentially jacking up the global temperature at the moment here so uh quite interesting stuff indeed um and yeah you could argue that it is a, a scary one as well meantime down under they're digging out this was hodham a ski resort down in Victoria in southeast Australia. So mega snowfall it has been seen at this particular location. And yes, you do see snow in Australia. Not widespread, but uh, you do see it nonetheless, of course. Thought that would be quite interesting to show you. Um, and uh, of course, there's that record warm temperature. This was, of course, the, the record warm temperatures. Eddie Graham. Um, put this tweet out that uh, the town centre of Stornoway yesterday 26.6 Celsius so it's second hottest day on record big rains occurring in parts where uh, historic rainfall in fact occurring in parts of India we've seen um, all time 24 hour rainfall records being achieved, uh, achieved and of course you don't expect to see that during uh, a developing El Nino year so of course this is good to see for parts of India doing pretty well with regards to the 2023 monsoon season Litchfield just north of Birmingham tweet by Dan Harris saying that we had 41.2 millimeters rain fall in three hours including 24.2 millimeters in just 15 minutes so very impressive uh, rainfall um, in parts of the Midlands yesterday thanks to those thunderstorms some snow uh, to the foothills of uh, uh, the uh, Himalayas yesterday afternoon as well uh, houses getting uh, taken away by uh, flash floods this was the scene in delhi with the monsoon rainfall of course and they uh, had the the first 50 celsius of the year in mexico back on the 4th of july um and it joined the united states for the uh, the, the you know the 50 degree club of course running rapidly out of time unfortunately so i'm not going to be able to cover some of the extremes that uh, i would like to cover and i'm not going to be doing a two part of this week i just simply unfortunately don't have time but i will try and do it maybe do a little bit more coverage in the days to come with regards to some of those extremes that have taken place around the world do like and subscribe of course if you haven't already done so hope you enjoy the rest of your sunday 
And yes, I will be back again tomorrow with a new week of weather coverage. So stay tuned for that. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you again tomorrow. Bye for now.